Hey everyone, I uh, finally got around to making the video about the new Ninja Fast Catch. First thing I wanted to talk about is why these are better than, in my opinion, than any other Fast Catch I've made before, and follow that up with some tuning instructions so you can get the most out of it. There's two different Ninjas, there's the ABS and a Nylon. Um, I think the ABS is a little bit slower and safer in windy conditions or for endurance. The Nylon can be faster. Um, but it can also handle more wind, so it's kind of a, a preference. So if you get them both, try them both out, you'll see um, what I mean. Um, first thing I want to talk about is, I've got diagrams. Why these boomerangs can be faster, but yet slower at the same time. And how fast catch has changed, um, well the way we make fast catch has changed over the years. Old style fast catch is very streamlined, um, very smooth airfoils, so there's very little drag. And the idea was no drag, faster boomerang. Simple enough. The problem is those boomerangs would go very far, they make a very big circle. And you can see here in this diagram, very rough, we have a wind going this way. And I throw a traditional fast catch. It's going to make this big looping circle. Can you see that? There we go. It's a big looping circle. We'll go out past 20 meters and come back. That flight path is usually, if you look at the tangents, it's usually at best 90 degrees, a lot of times 120 or even more. It's a big round circle. So we found that ideally we just want to reduce our circle. If we can get a boomerang to fly a more elliptical path, it's more like a yo-yo. It goes out past the 20 and back. We keep it within 90 degrees, even within 60 degrees. Um, so to do that, we've made some changes on the boomerangs over time. I'll talk about those in a minute. Um, another thing, um, that's lap time. So it's pretty straightforward. You have a longer flight path versus a shorter flight path. So a longer flight path needs a much faster boomerang to get back in the same amount of time because it has to travel more distance. We have a smaller flight path. The boomerang doesn't have to go as fast. So we have a slower boomerang. It's easier to throw, easier to catch. Now another problem that we'd have with fast catch when we have a really fast boomerang is sometimes it would pop up over our heads at the end. The reason that happens is because... Let me just grab a boomerang here. When a boomerang is moving forward very quickly out of your hands and around the first curve it has a lot of momentum and with that momentum the lift caused by the wings makes the boomerang precess however as the boomerang slows down at the end it does it loses its momentum therefore the lift caused by the wings is going to go in the direction of the top of the boomerang if that makes sense so in other words a fast catch will precess on the way out. A trick catch boomerang, when it comes overhead, will float like an MTA. There's no more precession. All the lift is up, so it floats. In the case of a fast catch that's coming back into us in more of a vertical position, as it loses its momentum, the lift is forward or at a little bit of an angle up over our heads. So if we have too much lift on a fast catch, as it slows down at the end, it can jump. Essentially, it's trying to hover away from us. And with a little wind underneath the boomerang, that effect is enhanced. So we want to create boomerangs that don't have that pop at the end. So a few things that we've done to accomplish a shorter flight path and keep boomerangs from popping overhead. Um, first thing is lighter materials. That sounds counterintuitive, um, but what happens is the lighter material will go out just as fast as the fast material, but slow down at the end. Fast material has more mass, it's going to keep moving. So the lighter material slows down right at the end, and that allows it to cut the corner a little bit more at the end and give you that tighter window. Um, second thing is we need even more precession. So what I've done is actually weighted the center. That causes the boomerang to turn more quickly once it slows down. So after that initial 
20 meters out, it starts to turn into the wind, it slows a little bit, the extra weight in the middle helps it precess. Likewise, you see all the trailing edge have taken off the tips. The idea here is the same thing, I'm taking weight out of the tips, adding weight to the center, you get more precession, you get a shorter flight path. That also gives you more control on the wind because you can now go over vertical and throw more of a, a teardrop shape. Instead of this big round flight, you can go three-dimensionally from high to low. Um, so we're using 7% ABS. That's the new stuff. It's, um, it's in between 5 and 9, obviously, so it's, it's got a little bit of floppiness, which is good in wind, but it also holds its tune a little bit better, more like the 9%. So it's kind of a, a nice blend. Um, okay, so these boomerangs have a very blunt airfoil. And this is, um, well, let me, let me show you the, this diagram here. Here is a traditional fast cage airfoil. It's got a very streamlined top. allows the air to move freely over it. It's got a little under camber. So when that's in position like this, it's causing more precession. Um, I'll make this brief. This is the new airfoil, very blunt in the front. What I've found, and what a lot of us have found, different boomerang makers, is boomerangs don't need leading edges or undercut at all. The thing that makes a boomerang turn is under camber, angle of attack, and trailing edge. The trailing edge is what gives lift. Even an airplane doesn't need a leading edge. Leading edge undercut just make a wing aerodynamic but it's not necessary so with this blunt airfoil as you can see here it's very blunt that causes the boomerang to really lose spin at the end and that's where we the boomerang kind of dies at the end and instead of popping over our hand or over our heads it just melts into our hands when we have a boomerang that comes in and stops like that it's easy catch the transition is sped up. You catch, turn, go. You're not fumbling around because this thing came in so fast it was bouncing all over the place. So we have that, that blunt edge. Now some of you will find you don't get enough spin on the boomerang to get it all the way back. That's okay. We all have different amounts of power, different amounts of spin. I certainly can't throw with as much spin as Logan Broadbent and I can't throw as hard as Matt Goliner. So we all adjust our boomerangs to, uh, for ourselves. Now if you need more spin on the boomerang, now you can make that front edge more aerodynamic. And there's two ways to do that. You can either, here's our blunt airfoil, you can either add, take off that, the edge on the leading edge, make it more aerodynamic. You can put a little undercut to make it more aerodynamic, or a little bit of both. So let's talk about what those do. If you take a little bit, put a little bit of leading edge that's going to give your boomerang more range. If you undercut a little bit, you're going to shorten the range. So as you're adjusting that, think about that. If your boomerang's going 23 meters, but you need it just to lose a little bit of spin, I would undercut it because it's going to shorten it down to 22. If your boomerang's going just 20 and you want to make sure you're safe, get 21 meters, put a little uh, leading edge and that's going to kick it out a little bit. If you like the boomerang the way it is, you can do a little bit of both. Now the easiest way to do this on the field is with a pair of scissors. And what you do, see if I can get a good angle on this. I don't know if I can. You just take it on the edge. So right now I'm, on, I'm undercutting and you just scrape it. Let me do it this way. I need somebody else to film this. <laughs> All right, let me try to turn this around. So if we're doing leading edge, yes, just like that, you're gonna scrape the edge off. And I don't know if you can see it in the video, but I'm slowly, you would take a little bit off each wing, just a scrape or two, test it out, then do a little bit more. You can do a little bit on the bottom and uh, just, Keep going back and forth just a little bit at a time until you get it the way you want. You'll quickly notice the extra spin rate. Now, if you have a lot of spin, a lot of power, boomerang might still be a little bit flighty. You can 
twist a little bit more positive angle of attack in there to add more drag, but that might shorten the range too much. So instead, a good technique is this hole right up here at the tip, about 45 degrees out from the, the original tri-fly hole. That's going to give you maximum amount of drag. So with that, though with a lot of spin, it's still going to die at the end, and, and that's good for um, windier conditions or if you just have a really strong throw. That's all for now. I hear the garage door opening, so my roommates are coming in. Say bye to Yoda. See you all soon.